All right. Hello and uh, welcome to uh, this event. It's UNFP and Global Media's Campaigns event where we'll hear about uh, the work done by grassroots campaigners who are successfully using the media to end FGM in their communities, in their countries, and uh, even beyond during the COVID-19 pandemic specifically. And we shall share a short video later on, under, uh, on FGM and COVID-19 series, uh, showcasing campaigners in action, relentlessly uh, working in the ASEAN to end FGM using their local languages, expertise, and with their own influencers. So we shall go through GMC's uh, work as well with the UNFPA, go through the new website, uh, a new website that we'll be launching soon. Uh, that we'll also have a free resource hub for all campaigners, journalists, and other players who need to better campaign on the media to end FGM. So please, uh, please stay put as we shall also launch a resource hub, uh, a resource pack, sorry, uh, for campaigners interested in using the media to end FGM uh, the, uh, during this session. You'll be able to receive that uh, on your emails later. So. As we kick start off, we have our speakers today. Among them is um, uh, the coordinator for the UNFPA UNICEF Joint Program to NFGM, uh, Muriel Tushminina, and Maggie O'Kane, who is the executive director for the Global Media Campaign. They'll kick start this, and then we will introduce all the panelists who are campaigners from all the other countries, uh, from all the countries, uh, uh, from the countries here in Africa. So without wasting uh, so much time, uh, help me welcome uh, Muriel, who uh, will take us through our remarks uh, as we start this. Welcome, Muriel. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, thank you for welcoming me. And, uh, and I'm really excited. I must say, uh, I'm always excited to join you guys, Global Media Campaign event and Maggie and the entire team. And it is indeed a moment of pride uh, to be here today among uh, the most, um, sorry, the many grassroots campaigners and to further have validate the incredible work of women and younger women who have lent their voices and amplified uh, all the cause of outrage on the rate of harmful practices in our communities uh, on the African continent as they come with experience very rooted in violence, even during uh, the pandemic uh, that has forced us to adapt and to hopefully uh, successfully overcome in the, in the next, uh, next months. Uh, the situation is same everywhere, compounded by you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, it has disrupted the socioeconomic fabrics of communities leaving millions of people at risk uh, of falling into extreme poverty. Uh, the gendered impact of the crisis is related to the increase of all types of violence against women and girls, particularly domestic violence and harmful practices such as female genital mutilation. This can be attributed to the lockdowns and movement restriction, which have left many of our girls and women being trapped at home with their abusers, pushed into uh, early child marriages and forced to undergo harmful practices, including FGM. And yes, at the heart of this crisis, we, are, we were alert by estimates that projected an addition of 2 million uh, girls who will be forced to undergo FGM by 2030. Yet, we were able to quickly adapt and build on our existing partnership with grassroots and activists to reach girls at risk and to engage communities in abandoning this human rights violation through innovative approaches such as contextualized media campaign in, our, in many countries like uh, Kenya, Somalia, Nigeria, the, the Gambia, and many other countries in Africa. Now that almost a year has passed since we've launched, and congratulations, by the way, uh, uh, the end of FGM media campaign training series. The good news is we know we, uh, we have been working in the context of global pandemic, and we are ready to face any similar uh, uh, circumstances to respond to similar crisis. Um, in the light of this year commission on the status of women, 
we must recognize the women who, have, uh, who are leading grassroots level work, such as the resilience campaign we have with us today, uh, like Miss Ayo uh, Bello from Nigeria, whom I met a few weeks ago at the Central, during our talk at the Central News. Congratulations. Sadia Hussein from Kenya, Ifra Ahmed uh, from Somalia, and uh, Lisa Kamara from the, Ga the Gambia, congratulations. Um, these women, we are called champion, uh, carried on the responsibility of continuing with sensitization campaign through innovative media approaches with the contest, within the context of the pandemic. UNFPA partnership with civil society organization, grassroots activists, campaigners are crucial to support um, the UN Global Joint Program to end FGM. We have less than a decade to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals 5.3 to, eliminate, uh, to el uh, eliminate all harmful practices, including FGM. Today, we call all actors at the grassroots level to continue strengthening existing partnership and build new ones to reach our common goal by 2030. And I look forward to continuing this journey with you. Thank you. Wow, thank you so lot, uh, Mirel. We do appreciate your remarks. And uh, we are grateful that you, we have you here today. So thank you very much. Uh, just help me welcome Maggie O'Kane, who is um, the director, uh, the executive director for GMC. Um, she has vast knowledge on the media and has been working in that field for uh, longer than some of us uh, were born. So uh, help me welcome Maggie, okay. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. Morel, it's a very hard act to follow because I think you've, you've painted the big picture. I just want to say from the global media campaign's point of view, this morning we were looking back at the film that we put together with the work of UNFPA responding to the, to the COVID crisis. And we were all quite emotional because there was a sense of a massive stepping up that we did with your support, a massive reaching out to, to the activists who've been there and who have been, actually to quote Domitella Chizang from, from Kenya, like flowers in the desert looking for water. And, you know, for nearly 10 years, we've been trying to bring media to the campaigners, to the grassroots. And suddenly UNFPA came along a year ago at the beginning of COVID and said, let's water this system. Let's get that energy out there and support them. So it was a quite an emotional preparation for us to see these things happening. And I think the thing that we learned in the last year is to quote another campaigner, uh, uh, Lucian Gande in Sierra Leone, is we've got this. You know, the activists have got this. They know how to use the media. They know how to use which influencers. They know which kind of media, which language, which messaging, which time of the year. So it's like hand it over in a way that's responsible and empowering and respectful to the people who are going to end FGM uh, in, in, in the next 10 years. And so practically, as well as that, I think Jeremiah is, you know, <laughs> has been around for long enough as an activist, long before he became, became director of communications at the Global Media Campaign. Uh, and he has he understands what activists need and has developed with UNFPA, and we are developing in the next couple of months, the, the activist hub, which is to say resources are there, funding is there to keep going, uh, to take all the lessons that we learned during COVID and, and to keep moving. So um, Jeremiah is going to take you, introduce you to the people who are really doing this. And I just want to say on a personal note that um, it's been nearly 10 years now of working on the media and actually learning by mistakes. We made big films, we talked to big international media organizations, and it took us years to realize that the key was local activism on the media um, and the campaigners. And a couple of months ago, for the first time, I just thought to myself, you know, I think we actually can do this by 2030 together. And then I thought really what had changed. And I think what's, what's changed is we've all become activists. You know, we're not journalists anymore. We're not people who are running UNFPA. You know, Morel is an activist, Rams is an activist, Berhanu is an activist. And there are hundreds now, over 500 media activists across Africa and hopefully across the world. Who, who, who will deliver this by 2030. So I'm really excited, I'm really proud, I'm really inspired 
by working with you all. So GMC is very grateful. And this is Jeremiah's. Uh, please watch the film and then join Jeremiah. Thank you. In March last year, coronavirus forced activists to take a new direction. Coronavirus is actually for real. It's not just about that child being abused, but that child will also be infected through this process. It's corona. What to do for play, play with at all? As FGM rates rose, scenes like this were secretly filmed by activists as over 100 girls were publicly paraded after being cut. UNFPA and GMC quickly stepped up, organising 15 emergency media academies. Hi everyone, Naima here from the Global Media Campaign. And today we're going to talk about the youngest young activists in the fight against anti-MGF. Hello, assalamu alaikum. We organise a webinar on the leaders of religion. It shows how much the youngest is engaged for the cause. Our webinars got 30,000 views across all platforms. In a time where everyone had given up and um, everyone was confused because of the pandemic, I think the webinar series was a lifesaver. It was an opportunity for us to keep our hopes alive as activists. Five steps to becoming a media campaigner. We created a free access bilingual virtual media library full of films, cheat sheets, and how-to animations to support and encourage new campaigners. I know young persons who started campaigning against FGM via what they've learned from the webinar series. Activists kept FGM high on the agenda with news reports, radio, social media, billboards, and engaging community and religious leaders. But the cutting implications they high. So let we know what thing we do. The good aspects of her, let we maintain her. وحل بركور كاس إيكا ورمان وحل وحي دهان إنوس وجيديان وكم نسي وأنا أمي السنة والله بلا تلا قبل كي هرت كل دهان قبل هرت فقير لينا ولا حيسي حياة بدنا كفائدة. People listen more to radio and whatever comes out of radio seems to be the fact. Female genital mutilation. Let's use the platform. Let's keep talking. When you speak on the radio, the lines are open. They can call directly. Say thank you for what you have done. You have changed my mind. I'm not going to circumcise my daughter. I'm going to give my daughter education. The power of the media cannot be underestimated. The key, the main key to ending FGM is media because it reaches everywhere, even to the remotest area. You will see a woman listening to radio. Let us spread this message. Save, Save a girl. Activists use their skills to create TV spots. Together, we can end female genital mutilation. In just this past year, we've welcomed 350 new activists. We've run 287 media campaigns with anti-FGM messages reaching 325 million people. Female genital mutilation no good for women. I'm glad that we partnered with the Global Media Campaign to reach out to local level campaigners and provide them with direct action grants to amplify their work and help them have a wider reach and impact in the elimination of FGM. <laughs> Wow, thank you very much uh, for that stellar one. Uh, I think we'll just go straight to it. Uh, there are, there's a lot when you look at where we've come from and uh, just looking at uh, what we've been able to achieve even during such an uncertain time during COVID-19. As campaigners, some of us were not quite tech savvy and challenges just forced us to be able to uh, think outside the box and adapting to new ways to continue working if spite uh, being held uh, or finding ourselves in uh, curfews and lockdowns and travel restrictions and public gatherings. 
And now we have amazing campaigners who are able to work digitally and in ways that are also uh, good for uh, the community still uh, uh, safely during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, looking at how media has been able to, uh, has, been able to has enabled the use of uh, different platforms, basically from social media to, uh, to, t uh, to television and radio. And now we are seated here speaking on Zoom and we are just going to hear everyone's uh, stories uh, and top among them are experiences by our, uh, our panelists today from uh, different African countries. And I'll just introduce them quickly. Uh, we have um, Peter Keme, who is based in Kenya. Peter has played a pivotal role in uh, how to manage the campaigns, especially on the media in, um, in Kenya. And this is just a representation of what we are doing in the long run uh, with all the countries and how uh, resources as well as uh, programming is being managed within these countries. We have Sadia Hussein, whose still work has been amazing um, in, in uh, uh, online platforms as well as on mainstream media and not forgetting uh, her work on the ground. Ifra Hamid, um, she, 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 she's based, uh, she basically works uh, and makes sure that there are campaigns running in uh, the Horn of Africa. Uh, we have uh, Somalia and Ethiopia, and she's going to talk about even the, um, the, 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 the refugee uh, camps and uh, how life looks like for internally, internally displaced people. Uh, Lisa, who's going to speak uh, on her experiences in the Gambia since, since she's worked with GMC for a long time uh, and on the media as well. She's a professional. Uh, and Ayo, all the way from Nigeria, we are really glad to have you. Uh, Ayo is also really experienced and uh, also has mentored lots of campaigners uh, across Africa. So just starting off from um, Peter, and uh, he's mostly known as PC here in Kenya. Uh, Peter, there has been a lot of reluctance, uh, little trust uh, in empowering truly uh, and also funding local campaigners and organizations uh, for a long time. And there has been uh, a challenge basically of making sure that there, there, there really is an impact on the ground by funding the right people. Uh, you have been involved in uh, distributing and as well as monitoring and managing uh, campaigns in, in Kenya. Just maybe if you could quickly take us through how the process looks like, Peter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeremy. Hi, good afternoon, uh, those in East Africa, and hope everyone else in the afternoon zone, and good morning to all of all who are in the morning time zones. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Peter Keme from Kenya. I'm currently working with GMC as the AAA activist. So our main role as the AAA activist is to receive uh, a direct action grant funds from GMC and distribute to activists, ensuring that the, the funds reach to activists and following up with the reporting, uh, both, uh, both financial reporting and the narrative reporting for, for the donor. So yes, Jeremy, as you said, for quite some time, it's been uh, 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 very reluctant from donors to, so, to fund directly activists and uh, civil society organizations at the grassroots. This is mainly because there, is, there has been no direct touch between the activists or the CSOs and the donors uh, based from outside the countries. But what uh, this concept by GMC through AAA does is that you already using someone who knows the landscape of that country better and who also knows the activists directly. Or, I mean, so it makes it much more credible and uh, uh, much more accountable to all, all corners. So it's, it's a trickle down, so it's much easier to identify the activists or the organizations to fund at the grassroots and it's also easier for follow-up in terms of reporting. Uh, just before then I must say that uh, we have been working with GMC even before the AAA uh, concept was initiated and we were a small group and this group was based on the fact that we had already interacted. We had gone through the physical trainings 
with, with GMC. So it was now the GMC funding the activists who already are known to them, who they know the impact and the work they are doing. But uh, with the uh, with the introduction of triple A, then the pool can be expanded without necessarily going into the physical meetings before the disbursement of the funds. It's, it's a, a game changer and it's really working well in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you very much, PC. Uh, just a quick one, and if you could make this brief. Um, we have worked together, you and I personally, um, and we have had a conversation on uh, how it always is difficult to get funds and uh, even make sure that you're accountable for it. Uh, on a personal level, you're based in, Ma in Mount Elgon, which is on the west uh, side of Kenya, uh, far away from Nairobi, where I would probably go pitch and uh, probably get grants. What difference does it make as an, as an individual? What, what difference does it really make to have grants that are regular in the long run? Yeah, so the, the first thing is, uh, as you know, grassroots, it, there are so many challenges at the grassroots, first of all, in terms of uh, awareness creation. These opportunities for funding are rarely known, uh, rarely reached to the grassroots level. But if you have someone who could bridge that gap by sharing the information to the grassroots activists that, yes, you can apply for this funding and you qualify for this, then that bridges the gap. But most importantly, and the second barrier to activists and other CSOs getting funding that has been a great one is basically the trust. Uh, and, and you could, and you and I know that we have been before then submitting so many proposals to so many organizations for funding. It's actually a brilliant idea you pitch, but at the end of the day, it boils down that do you have the capacity? Can they don't trust you with these resources? As long as the donor cannot trust you, then that resources will not come to you. But the introduction of this phase where you are using a person who understands the landscape of the, of the country, who understands those people who are manning these projects, then it is that trust in terms of, can you trust someone? Yes, if this person trusts you, then he or she can fund you. And that is basically what has been the biggest problem between CSOs and activists getting funding from donors. Thank you, PC. Uh, we just go straight on uh, and really valuable um, uh, information. Thank you very much. Uh, as we move on, we have um, Ifra, and I see that you're joining in right now. Ifra has been working uh, among the refugees uh, in Somalia and basically the Somali uh, the whole of Africa in general. Uh, this week, and just bringing this to context, this week, uh, Kenya has given an ultimatum and uh, is actually ordering the closure of Dadaab and Kakuma camps, which are the biggest uh, camps around this area, even among uh, the top in the world. And uh, you've been working with refugees and international, inter internal, internally displaced persons in uh, Somalia. Please shine some light into your work in these camps and uh, what the imminent closure of such refugee camps has on FGM and probably would the media help in the long run? Thank you, Jermaine, for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Global Media Campaign and John Borgram for organizing this event because it is, it is very important that activists to be heard, their voices, and Maggie, who's a drive, who give us the opportunity, our voice to be heard as um, IFRA, as IFRA Foundation, or even activists, and use my um, opportunity profile as a UNHCR high profile supporter. I've been very interested in working with the women in this place. And the reason being is that they are the vulnerable women that who are more at risk on female genetic mutilation. So um, the opportunity with UNFBA Somalia and then GMC through IFRA Foundation, we have contributed uh, training for 80 women from IDBs. As you all know that uh, this month, it remarks one year uh, after the COVID uh, started. So you can understand that uh, last year, there was an increase of FGM in Somalia, especially in the IDBs, and also the uh, district as well, because young girls were at risk on being cut, and then there was no hospital or medical or any support. But um, emergency support that Global Media Campaign give and UNFBA Somalia, 
what we did is we, we decided to train 80 women from the IDBs. We want to make sure there is no place that women who are pregnant dies labor on bleeding in the IDBs. Plus women are not, young girls are not cut. So uh, we trained the 80 women outside the IDBs and we contribute uh, 80 radio, which actually allowed them to listen the religious leaders when they're speaking on FGM. And that really gift lifted it lifted up the women in the IDBs because each IDB we've been training, they can they have um 150,000 uh 150 uh householders, which is maybe 1,500 families. And you can know like each family, they they might have five, six um, you know, children, they might be three or four girls and two or boys. So we we decide to train them and make sure that the women they understand the problem and they understand the risks. So, um, and then again, uh, using the TV and radios, and also we are so much thankful for the religious leader we have in Somalia who have been a very champion, though even Somalia, the difficult is when they talk about a debate on FGM as a Sunnah and Fir'aun, which we cannot actually win debate within them. But as you all know that, IFRA Ahmed, IFRA Foundation, Global Media Campaign, and also the joint program is zero tolerance on FGM in Somalia. But we have to go along with the word as the use of Sunnah and Fir'aun. But at um, the same time, we've been doing a lot of media activities with the, the, the media journalists who have been trained in Somalia. For me to move in other regions, I also had the opportunity. I was given a chance to go in Somali regions in Ethiopia, where I have met with the journalists who have no idea about FGM at all. There have been some activities in Somali regions, but it was it's not like the way now Somali people, they come together understanding and knowing the risks of, of FGM. But now we are in a place that where we did a documentary, if the small film where they say, why do you talk about FGM? For me, it's normal because when I started in Somalia, it was same. But now Somali region, we are getting the point where the people are saying, we want the FGM to be banned. They had a fatwa that was supported UNFBA and other organizations long time ago. The fatwa was there, but a global media campaign supported International Women's Day this year. The fatwa was brought in by the Somali region government to discuss again and now it is a really good position where the people in the Somali region are saying, we want the FGM to ban, we want the people to understand. So it all that come from global media campaign and we really thank Maggie O'Kane drive of going everywhere and saying the activists are the key. And I thank you for that. And I think I will stop there. Thank you very much, Ifra. Uh, I'll just ask a quick question. And uh, we've been talking about campaigners always taking the lead. And now we're also talking about amplifying our grassroots work on the media, bringing in journalists as well as activists. Does it really make a difference from your perspective as you've you know, worked with different uh, stakeholders and done activities in different ways? Does it really make a difference to work on the media with local influencers, with influencers like religious leaders as well? Does it make any difference uh, in, in accelerating an end to FGM? Um, maybe I will take you back in 2017, first time when a global media campaign, they start training in Somali region in Goodland. And I remember people where they all say, kind, kind of laughing and saying, why do you have to talk? This is normal. Why would it, wouldn't you allow the girls to be cut and things like that? And then we did a training in Somalia, in Mogadishu, in, at 2018 and all this concept have changed even though I started my own campaign in 2013 and also uh, people were saying that I'm a western I'm this I'm that but now really uh, the media it has a much impact than just being like for example Somalia talked about FGM in 1984 and you know if it was whatever they done if it was effective by now we could celebrate of the uh, you know ending FGM in Somalia. But till uh, global media campaign to come to Somalia, there was not knowing about FGM and the problem. So the media has a, so much impact. And think about the religious leaders. 
who actually never sit down together and discuss on FGM. But when we started the activities, now we see more religious leaders who are speaking out, who are telling the mothers not to come. We have few champions and we also have young ambassadors who are going door to doors, uh, especially now in the, in the hard time uh, educating. So the media has a really impact and also the media amplifying our own voices because if there was a media, if there wasn't media, there wouldn't be anything. Because now, see in Somalia, Somalia is is a big is a big place, and you see, a global media campaign funding goes to for different five regions. Like all, all these five regions, we build the journalists, we build the religious leader, we build the activists, and now we we like for example um this year february we did international women's day and we did the uh, 6th of february international day uh, international zero tolerance day so what we decide is to actually interview somali women who are powerful in the community minister of regions and minister of federal government of somalia so we have our own activists where we educate in religious leader and media and same time we want the leaders to also hear our voice because end of the day, we all fighting to end the FGM 2030, especially our leaders to adopt this. This is not only international um, international problem, but also the national problem. So inviting the leaders into it, it makes a really difference. So I think um, I'm sure 100% and it is really, it is uh, media and also trainings and, you know, meeting with the groups, different levels and using all the big journalists, it makes so much difference, especially using the people in a local. Thank you, and one thing I want to say, yeah. Yeah. now we decide because the, the lockdown, there is no uh, event hosted. So what we decide is train the women in the IDBs, the gatekeepers and giving the opportunity by among themselves to raise awareness. The ambassador ne networks, they always present there, but we allow them they, to tell each other the problem of FGM, what, what we train them and what they heard the radio. Thank you. Amazing, Ifra. We'll just hop on uh, to Sadia here in Kenya. Uh, Sadia has been uh, involved in um, grassroots as well as uh, mainstream and social media campaigns. Uh, she's really active and has made an impact. Uh, there have been studies that have been conducted in the uh, Tanari, Tana River region in Kenya, and there has been a big change in the perception of FGM and a big drop in the practice of, uh, of, of type 3 FGM, which um, is really uh, impactful, I'd say. And Sadia will probably walk through us. And you've been working on the media, Sadia. We know your story. So um, we probably want to concentrate much more on uh, any uh, any 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 living experiences as well as the difference that FGM has made uh, on your campaigns. Welcome, Sadia. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My name is Sadia Hussein from Tana River County. Uh, I'm a survivor of FGM and a champion as well. Um, actually, media has really helped me to amplify the voices of survivors, the voices of religious leaders, um, the voices of male champions, the voices of even children. Um, actually, uh, before um, I, I joined the Media Academy in Camp Nguria 2017, I've been a campaigner for almost uh, eight years, but no one actually, uh, for example, uh, we never had to reach many more people. But when we started using uh, the local radios, the TV, um, we really made sure that everyone could hear our voices and our campaign. And uh, during this COVID, when 2020, they first announced that there is corona and we were unable to do the public gatherings were banned. There was restrictions of movements and we were hopeless. And we thought at some point, it's like we are back to zero. But thanks to global media campaign, they supported our media activities. We have been using the local radios. We have been using social media. And we started a hashtag called NFGM prevent corona because it's at some point I felt like, you know, yes, Corona is raging globally, but FGM has been raging for years and no one actually prioritized FGM. The schools were closed, 
we had to like uh, the girls were at more risk of being kept and we really had to do uh, mass media campaigns which we actually did both on social media both on local radios both on tvs and thanks today we are again here uh, schools have been closed again so i believe the global media will do so much again uh, if resources are there um, recently there was a study that was done in Chan river county which proved uh, how media has really impacted um, our campaigns and uh, the reduction of fgm type 3 of fgm actually reduced and that's because you know with the local radios we are able to reach thousands and hundred thousands of people at a go so um even the recent research that was done shows that in Tana river there is a reduction of fgm and actually media really helped us to achieve more giving the contextual um uh just putting it into context Tana river is a vast uh is a vast county and um, it stretches in areas where sometimes um, internet itself, even mobile phones, uh, it's difficult to make calls in such areas. But uh, radios reach uh, far into the communities. You've been traversing the county for a long time now, but you've also been able to hold uh, radio sessions uh, and also on Somali television, you've been there. Uh, you've been able to have these conversations with people who speak the same language. One conversation we've always had with people is uh, why, uh, how, how can we have the language? Uh, how can we spread the, how can we spread, spread, spread the, uh, the message uh, in a language that the community which practices it um, understand? And I just want to throw this one very quickly, Sadia. What impact does it really have to speak it, uh, to speak about it in the local language? Uh, and also uh, what impact does it have to share survivor stories? If you could do that briefly. Um, Jeremy, uh, thank you so much. And thank you, Global Media Campaign, for actually supporting grassroots activists like me and uh, many more. Uh, allow me to say this. When we are talking about the local radio, then using the vernacular uh, local language, it really has a lot of impact because you don't need any translations whatsoever to convince people you know you are speaking with them you are communicating with them one on one direct messaging and one more thing that uh, we always do is for us we don't just go to radio we make sure that, that we have facts when it comes to female genital mutilation at the local community that you come from so the local radio stations really help us to actually reach to uh, actually reach even the hard to reach areas, the far end areas of Tana River. And as you said, yes, indeed, Tana River is very vast. And with the local TV stations, it really helped us actually communicate with the Somali community where we are talking about an FGM prevalence of 94%. That means nine out of 10 girls are already cut. So imagine when we are using uh, the local TV stations, the local TV vernacular stations, we are communicating in a language, even the recent court ruling. Yesterday and even the other day, I was in STN and RTN speaking about the court ruling and explaining to my community in a language they understand better, supported by the global media campaign to actually ensure that they understand what the Kenyan law says, what the court ruling said, and we had a very brilliant discussion. Uh, when it comes to the survivors, as you said, the impact it has on survivors, many survivors felt that it's not easy to speak about FGM because they are already living with this, a kind of trauma. But allow me to say this, when I started using media, even Today, there was a lady who was actually who took the link from STN TV, shared on Twitter, and told me, Saadia, this is the spirit. This is the kind of words we want to hear from survivors. That means every survivor who watches that, uh, that clip will actually be inspired and would really want to be like Saadia, would really want to share 
her, her story. And uh, when it comes to using the media, I always say using the media is not just like uh, just one approach that you said and FGM. The power of media is actually means that if we really want to engage the religious leader, for example, the media is still there because we will amplify the voices of religious leaders via the media. If we want to use the survivors, for instance, we can still use the media. When we want to amplify the voices of male champions, we still use the media. Like the men and FGM use still the media. When it comes to, let's say, the children themselves, like the book I'm going to launch tomorrow, these children will still use the media to, to amplify their voices. When we are talking about even uh, the stakeholders, we are all here on the media. So media is actually the connecting point for all of us. Every approach that we really want to use, media is inevitable. It's like the platform that connects us all, whether social media, whether the print media, whether TV or local radio, I really applaud Global Media Campaign for starting this great initiative. And thanks to the partners like you, NFPA, who are really helping uh, us, the grassroots activists, achieve more and more and more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadia. Uh, that's really uh, insightful. And I, I know that it's going to uh, change perception as well, uh, not just from uh, the people who are going to receive the messages, but looking at the campaigners themselves and how they run their campaigns, it's really important. Uh, to and listen to other people who have been in the same situation as you have been. Thank you. So we really do appreciate your uh, input, Sadia. Uh, we now go to the Gambia and uh, Lisa Kamara has been uh, on the NFGM campaign and uh, on the media, a professional she is. Uh, and, and she's been working with GMC uh, since 2014. One issue that has been there since then is funding models, because the thing is, once we have support for the campaigners, which is basically uh, supporting them on transport, as well as ensuring that they can get into these communities and on the media, it has been really inconsistent uh, for a long time. Uh, but since last year, uh, it has changed, not just within the Gambia, but within uh, the, the, the organizations, uh, sorry, within the countries that GMC um, uh, is working in. And with the support of UNFPA, it has been much more consistent. Um, but just from um, someone who's been there before, uh, Lisa, will you please explain to us how it's been like um, compared to now and how, what impact does it have to your work and, uh, and, and campaigns in the Gambia? Um, thank you very much, Jeremiah. Good afternoon from the Smiling Coast, the Gambia. Um, good morning, good evening to everyone out there. Um, thank you for the question. Um, Jeremiah, for me, I'm wearing two hats today. Like you said, I've been with GMC since 2014, and I am also part of the first group of graduates from Kenya. So I am privileged to be in the Kenya group, in the Nigeria group, in other groups as well. And I have seen over the years how things have changed, how we have progressed. Um, I would say three or four years before UNFPA came on board, um, we hear activists in all these different groups, including the Gambian group, asking about funding. There has been a lot of gap in between funding when they come in. So there has been a lot of shift in 2020. Um, it's more exciting in these groups. Every day I go into these groups, I see you know posters and information about what what's happening in all these in all these countries. So for me, it is important that is in the uh, international. But um, in Gambia as well, uh, I would say these funds. Um, made it a lot, you know, easy for me um, uh, to speak out. When, when COVID-19 came, people were frustrated. Um, a lot of um, things shifted on how to control COVID. Um, but for me as an activist and also a survivor of FGM, it was important that we kept the momentum. Um, there was no going back to the communities. There was no more community discussions. How do we get to these people? They don't have access to social media. They don't have access to the Twitters and to the TikToks to get information. The only way was local media and that was community radio. It was important for us to continue, of course, uh, you know, advising them on, on the restrictions, but also reminding them of the effects of FGM and also the laws that are in the country. And the only way this was 
possible was to the funding. Um, so it was important, like I said, as an activist and also a survivor to continue, continue the momentum and continue speaking to the general public, especially the communities about FGM. And this was made through this fund. So um, I would say we're really grateful. Um, I have seen the shift, I have seen the progress from 2014 to date, but I would say what we have achieved community-wise with the media in 2020 has been you know, massive. And, and it's because we've not rested in 2020. There has not been that, that funding gap. And I would, I'm sure other countries will also attest to the same. I mean, the Nigeria group, the Kenya group, and I see how excited activists and, and, and media personnel are, are in these groups. They continue doing work and continue speaking to the, to the people. So as activists, the only thing that excites us is to continue doing what we like doing, continue educating the people. And this was made, this was really made um, 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 possible with, with this funding. We were really grateful for the support and we are hoping that, that it won't stop here. And I'm not only speaking on behalf of Gambia, like I said, I'm speaking on behalf of the other countries because I have been there since 2014 and I have seen how progressive we've come, especially within, within, within last year where it was really difficult for all of us. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Lisa. We don't have much time, but I'll just uh, extend that question uh, still to Ayo, who is in Nigeria right now. Uh, Ayo has um, has also been uh, in these circles and in the NFGM campaign for quite some time. And um, we've seen lots of consistency um, coming up in the, in the previous year, especially since COVID-19, uh, where we've been able to have it consistently with the campaigners being on the media as well. Um, I just uh, from your experience and um, just shedding light into how campaigns used to look like uh, before, um, you know, before starting to work on the media. I know you have a story as well of, uh, when you used to campaign off the media. Um, just knitting everything together very quickly, what advice or what piece of advice do you have to upcoming campaigners who have never used the media, who have not? Uh, included any interventions or uh, uh, going to journalists in any way. Uh, what advice do you have to such people who would like to start off uh, campaigning on the media? All right, please unmute, uh, Ayo. Oh, apologies for that. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very, very um, glad. Um, Campaigning for any cause at all, you know, has to do with passion. It's one thing to have an idea of what you want to do. It's another thing to have passion. You know, once you have passion, the energy is definitely there. I tell people, whatever it is you want to do, you have the ability to do it. You, 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 you have to be the first person to support yourself before the world will definitely support you. I've been campaigning, you know, against FGM for more than seven years, and um, I've actually been working to end FGM because of how passionate I am and because of the personal story I have. So um, even if there has been um, funding opportunities, even if there has been GMC, even if there has not been GMC, I'm very sure that I would still be campaigning against FGM because it is actually what I've always wanted to do. And I told myself, come what me, I'm going to keep campaigning against FGM. So I think activists need to understand that, okay, you need to be very certain to say, okay, this is exactly what I want to do. And then when support's coming, you know that that is secondary. So first of all, you need to be very passionate and um, know that this is exactly what you want to do. So that's the beginning. And after that, you can now have support and climb on the shoulders of people. There's a lot of difference between when I used to campaign against FGM five years ago, four years ago, until now. You know, when it comes to FGM, um, when it comes to relationship with GMC, it's beyond funds, you know, the ability to also learn from other activists, you know, there, there is, I, I love the way GMC operates. It's something I've not seen before, really. It's something I've not seen before, the structure, the system, you know, everybody's afar, but at the same time, everybody's close, you know, we, we are together. So there's a structure to collaborate, to help, you know, to learn, to grow the opportunities within. I mean, it, it's, it's a very beautiful one. So I would encourage young activists to be focused, you know, to know what exactly they want to do and to remain focused. It doesn't have to do with funds, funds or no funds, funds is secondary. 
you have to know that, okay, I want to solve a problem and come up with creative ideas. When you're passionate, you have enough ideas, you come up with ways you can actually campaign against FGM. Fine, we used to do door to door, you know, knock on people's doors to tell them, okay, stop this campaign. But, you know, with the support we have gotten, we've been, we've been creative to get more results. Of course, more support equals to more results. But at the same time, your passion has to be your number one focus. Because I've seen lots of activists who, who used to be very passionate and along the line, they just lost focus and then somehow they are no more on fire like before. So consistency is a thing. If you claim to be a campaigner, you claim to be an activist, consistency is a virtue. It is something you need to have because things won't, won't be smooth. Thank God for opportunities, for funds that has come in. I mean, within last year, I'm happy Lisa has spoken about how challenging last year was. Shadia has also spoken. You know, I wasn't even expecting the level of support, but with or without the support, it wasn't like, okay, maybe the ground grassroots advocacy will change. We just have to come up with ideas on how we can compromise. So the most important thing is for you to have a heart for, campaign, for the campaign and also to have an energy that backs it up. And after that, the world is yours. Thank you. Amazing, Ayo. Thank you very much. That's, yeah, that's straight to the point. And we'll just then move on to uh, a resource that's coming up. Um, just backing up what you were saying. Uh, we'll, ju we'll just look at some of the campaigners that are uh, showcasing their work and where you could also access uh, your reports uh, or basically your stories because uh, there is power in stories and not just on mainstream media but we are in the long run um, content creators as well. So I'm just going to share uh, uh, the screen and just introduce you to um, uh, a website still being built but I think it's going to be really important for all of us to be able to access all this information. Uh, so as you can see here, and this is Ayo's work as well, uh, different campaigners are sharing their stories. TMC uh, is uh, revamping its website now, and we basically are prioritizing campaigners' stories, meaning that you'll be able to learn, you'll be able to share your stories, you'll be able to use the stories that you, uh, the activities that you had in form of stories are able to be spread. You can use them to apply for more grants in the long run. So I'm just going to take you through how to navigate it. And when we are done, uh, I will also, um, uh, we will finish off with, with, with launching um, uh, a media toolkit, which is going to be uh, very helpful because it just summarizes what, what's been done uh, in the previous uh, months and some tips on how to campaign um, uh, against FGM, especially on the media. Um, so we are really grateful for UNFPA uh, initially because uh, some of the pages here, as you are going to see the masterclasses, uh, are really impactful. Other than waiting for uh, tips on a physical meeting, you will now be able to develop yourself and grow yourself um, even remotely and uh, make sure that it's also chronological. So let's just start off. So this is the globalmediacampaign.org. So globalmediacampaign.org is the URL to the website. It's still under development, but we thought it's important for us to do it um, at this time when we have this webinar. Um, so when you go to the page, I'll just go to the most important pages for now. Um, I'll go to the campaigns per country. And um, if you want to have a quick sneak peek into uh, exactly um, what Kenya is doing, what Nigeria is doing, uh, what Sierra Leone is doing, this is the place to go. So uh, when you go to campaigns by country, you'll be able to view them, which is um, like here you see Ethiopia. And if you just drop down, you'll be able to see uh, the latest stories from Ethiopia. Uh, same thing with Guinea and uh, as well as Kenya, you'll be able to see uh, your faces, your campaigns, your reports, yourselves. You'll be able to see uh, what others are doing uh, in that country, latest ones. So. Uh, you'll be able to follow up and learn from your campaigners as well. And whenever you need your report, you'll be able to access them there. Um, so that is uh, what we are doing right now. And when you go to uh, individual stories, uh, it's all about the campaigners because we believe that campaigners are the number one, uh, the number, basically they're the one who do the job. Ours on this end is just, um, to make sure that everything uh, comes together in terms of support, uh, but from outside. So in this case, uh, you are able to access this website from different languages. As you can see, we have uh, French speaking countries uh, and English speaking countries, and even Somali speaking countries. And so this does not limit anyone. If you want to view the website in Somali, 
just come up here and you'll be able to uh, view it in whichever language. So here now it's in French uh, and just to, uh, tweak it and you'll be able to also view it in Somali as you can see here. That way we'll be able to um, have reports that are accessible to all the campaigners in the long run that we are able to learn from each other. Um, we believe that uh, so, uh, being able to share ideas as well as concepts uh, and our stories is super important. Uh, but when we bring our forces together, we'll be able to change the narratives as well and guide how um, campaigns are done, either by financially uh, um, saying this is what works, uh, the models as well. So it's really important that we think about those things and uh, we come together and this enables us to do that. Uh, you are also able to um, do master classes. As you can see, you, you're, you're still uh, under development. So uh, you can sign up so that once it's um, up and running, you'll be able to, um, you, you'll get a notification and you can start taking classes. But just a snip, um, a, a, a snapshot for what uh, it's going to look like. Um, you'll be able to access media classes and see how long it's going to take, what kind of material is inside there, and what do you expect when uh, you, you take that, uh, when, that course. So in this case, for example, uh, you will be able to see an overview uh, what it's going to help you when you uh, finish that course, a small summary there, and then you'll also be able to divide it into classes. And then that way you'll be able to uh, organize yourself and know that once I'm able to uh, complete this course, then it's going to be it's going to help me probably work on radio, you know, how to uh, reach more people on social media. So it's class by class and it's a module. Once you complete, you'll be able to uh, run it in the long run and be effective on the media. Uh, one more important uh, thing for anyone who is interested is uh, the impact and data part. We'll be populating this area just to see what we've been able to achieve and using numbers and uh, proven uh, methods, we'll be able to uh, communicate to everyone that uh, there are methods that have been proven and you could try them out. So um, we just encourage you to visit the website and we will be able to um, access it wholesomely together. All right, so um, I'll just uh, bring uh, up Naima now. Uh, if you could please share it from your side, Naima. Uh, a quick one on uh, the uh, the resource uh, which has been developed uh, in partnership with the UNFPF as you bring this to a close. If you have any questions, uh, I know we are almost running out of time, if not already, um, just drop them in the question and answer area and we will answer them as soon as we can. This resource, we're just going to produce it very quickly. It is um, the work that we've already done and really thankful for the UNFPA for this and the joint program as well. Uh, for really bringing together all these webinars, all these campaigners, all these speakers, and reaching millions and millions and millions of people. And we are uh, still going to forge on on this. Uh, as you can see, there was a series that was done uh, from last year during the COVID-19, uh, the NFGA media campaigns under COVID-19 series webinars where we were able to interact, encourage each other, as well as grow each other at that time. And so you'll be able to, uh, and this is going to be sent to your email, get a resource that's going to show you what was done, as well as tips and uh, highlights on what you can do to um, basically run better campaigns. So if you scroll down a little bit, uh, here there are highlights on what uh, worked, the lessons learned. Uh, you'll be able to get these tips uh, or from campaigners, uh, people who have been on the ground really making a lot of changes uh, due to COVID-19. So lessons learned are there as well. If you scroll down. You'll be able to get the links and watch those webinars uh, right from your device. And we are really proud to really say the campaigners have been a big part in this running and hosting the campaigns as well as organizing, mobilizing and inviting the friends, uh, making sure that you're taking part as well uh, in the creation of content, which is helpful to others who are trying to adapt to these situations. So you're going to receive this masterpiece uh, just after uh, this webinar, you're going to receive an email, uh, which will enable you to view it. 
we encourage you to uh, also share it with your friends. And the thing is, uh, don't uh, just sit on it, learn from it and uh, make your campaigns better. So um, if there are any questions, I'll probably be happy to deflect it to um, uh, the relevant uh, uh, people who probably will answer them better. And then we bring this to our close. I see um, a question here. Thank you very much, Naima. I see a question here from Mohammed Adam Jr. He says, in relation to ending FGM by 2030, what sustainable funding path has DFC got for Sierra Leone? I'd probably uh, share that with Maggie. If that's okay. Yes, Sierra Leone is, is, is a real challenge because um, at the moment it's not part of the joint program, but uh, I think this the the thinking is that um there, that, that that hopefully may change in the future. We we are not um, responsible for that and we are constantly seeking out other funds, but um I don't know if, if you and FPA want to answer that. I think it's it's um, it's up in the air at the moment, but there is certainly a recognition that there is an amazing, uh, powerful movement of activists like Team Toncolini or Port Loco who are really making a difference. So we are finding whatever way we can to support and we will continue to do that from GMC's point of view. All right, thank you, Maggie. Uh, Mohammed still asks, who can apply for direct action grants? Uh, just a quick one uh, for anyone who has not been involved in the campaign, who can apply for direct action grants of GMC? So what, what we, we want to do is we, we are, uh, are we talking about Sierra Leone? Because what we will do, we, is this from Sierra Leone particularly? Yes, but I think it also applies generally to everyone. So, so during COVID, it has been challenging because what we normally do is a five-day uh, uh, physical media campaign academy. But what we've learned through this work with UNFPA is that we can do media academies virtually. We'll continue to do that. Um, people apply to be part of the media academies. They become part of the community to, um, who are working on FGM. So I think it's important that we're all accountable to each other and you're, you're connected with the existing community. And as Peter Kimi said, it's, it's PC said, it's get in touch with your with the person who's running your campaign, email us on GMC and we'll let you know who that is in the country, apply to your AAA activists. I mean, all, nearly everyone we work with are people who are committed already to working on FGM and demonstrate a commitment to that. Um, and, and, you know, get to know your, your, your campaigning community um, and then you will be eligible. But we hope to do uh, we hope to do refresher campaigns online, preferably in person as soon as we can. Thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, really, in person uh, campaigns, we've been uh, out of touch for a long time. So I'm pre pretty sure many campaigners would like to probably hold in person campaigns. Uh, but COVID nineteen uh, is here with us now, so we have to find alternatives, of course. Thank you very much. If there is any other question, uh, we are now open for that. Um, we, I'm, I'm going to share the link to the website as requested on the chat section. It's globalmediacampaign.org and uh, someone just going to type there right away, as well as uh, just reminding you that to get the resource we just uh, shared on the screen uh, by UNFP as well on your email. So if you have any questions, this is an open ground. We don't have much time. Uh, so if there is anything that's burning, please feel free to ask and uh, we'll try our best to answer. So this is open for everyone. Uh, to the panelists, if there's anything that you need to add as well, please uh, feel free. This is the time to do it. Um, I wanted to say something, Jeremy. Okay. Is that Sadia? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I I really wanted to give an advice to the upcoming media activists. Um, actually, using the media is not all about leaving all other approaches you have been doing. It it simply means you need to amplify and reach as many people as possible. Twitter, uh, Facebook like the general social media will connect you to even many more people uh, who will support your campaign. 
For me, when I first joined Twitter, I met a number of youths who are actually challenging me and saying, you know, Saadia, FGM is part of our religion, it's Sunnah. But when I continued sharing the hashtag FGM, not my religion, recording the voices of religious leaders and recording the voices of survivors, sharing them, they started feeling the pain. And actually it was a game changer for me. Using also the local vernacular radios, make sure as a media activist, make sure you have facts and contents never contradict yourself and always consistency and persistency is key as a media graduate you should never contradict yourself make sure you are someone who is passionate and committed to move forward so that whenever there is something small from gmc it will be a top up and make you actually amplify and actually make it big thing out of it Reason being, I'm saying this, sometimes when I get the chance to do a radio program, what I do when I go there, I even also ask them kindly, can you also do a recording? Can we have the, like, the voice do it, running it on for a man? You know, that will help you and the community understand better what FGM really is. Not everyone who is out there understands the pain and sufferings we endure in silence. When we are using the media, especially for the survivors, let them know why they must speak out. Give them that confidence. When you are on the radio or TV, make sure you are not further subjecting stigma to these survivors. Make sure you give them that motivation, that safe space that they can actually share their voices. I believe if we all use any approach we are using, if we all use the media, we can even make FGM become a, a global priority. And by 2030, we would have ended FGM. In fact, in Kenya by 2022, we will all end FGM if we really make sure that we use the media as it is supposed to be used. Thank you. Thank you, Sadia. Um, someone just asked uh, if the grants, are the grants purely for media activists or civil society activists or other activists other than journalists? Um, I think I'll just give that to Maggie again. Um, and uh, we almost bring that to a close right now. So, so, so to be clear, the, the grants are whether you're a journalist or an activist uh, to amplify voices on the media. So it's actually, we, we, we're rather than it's for activists and it's for journalists. It's for anyone who, who comes up with a good way of amplifying the anti-FGM message. It doesn't matter who you are, as long as you're part of the community, you've got integrity, you're passionate and you want to get on the media. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, we just bring this to a close. If there is any question, uh, please feel free to uh, just um, reach out to us. The ways and means are all um, available. I see Lisa is raising her, 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 her hand. I uh, will just close with Lisa's uh, remarks. If you're there, Lisa. Yes, um, Jenna, I was just going to quickly say to, to activists as well, um, you're not using media just for the sake of using it, just because IO or, or Sadia uh, uses community radio or television to target a certain person doesn't mean you have to use the same platform. So it should be targeted. It depends on who you're targeting. If you're targeting the politician, get the right media where you can access the politician. If you're targeting the traditional leader, get the right media uh, platform that you can access them. So it has to be targeted depending on who, when, where. So those things have to be well calculated because you could be using Twitter or Instagram and the people you're targeting are not there and do not have, have access to that. You could be using also the community radio and the person you're targeting is not connecting to the community radio. So you need to target it well, depending on who your target audience are and where they, they connect to most. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, should we bring this to an end right now? Uh, just to give uh, a big thank you to everyone who's been here today. Um, it's really been an, ama an amazing one, sharing all um, the thoughts and ideas from, uh, from everyone who has spoken today. Um, 
I'm not sure. Should I uh, just close this, Maggie? Uh, should I? Uh, yeah, you, do you have you, any closing remarks on your side? No, I don't have any closing remarks. I just, uh, I think they should be yours, uh, Jeremiah. It's just a privilege and an honor to work with so many passionate people from the UNFPA through the activists to you, Jeremiah. I think we're a very, very lucky team and I think we can do this by 2020. Over to you. 20, 2030, you mean, Maggie, yeah, sorry. 2030. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. And also to thank you to Naima and to Rams and to Moral and to Burhanu, um, who have also been massively important driving forces here who are always behind the scenes. Thank you. Thank you. We bring this to a close. Thank you very much for joining us today. You will receive an email uh, just uh, sharing the resources that we had promised. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Lisa, uh, you're raising your hand, so we'll close uh, with your remarks as well. No, she was saying bye. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought she was raising her hand. All right. Goodbye, everyone. It was nice seeing you all. And bye. let's keep the conversations going. Thank you. Bye. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.